Hi, welcome to Trapping Inc. I'm Sandy Mellon. Well, we're in uh, February and uh, we're out for muskrats. Now, muskrats have one of the longest seasons of any fur bearer in Alberta. Goes uh, much longer than actually the pelts are really primed for, but from the 1st of October until in some places into May. But by then, the hides aren't really very good. At this particular time, though, the, the hides are really good through the ice and this is a push-up that you see on lots of different lakes and down in here you can see that there is water you poke these things open and there's water down here and this is where we'd set a um, a long spring trap and uh, and catch a muskrat through the ice the leather on them is absolutely superb now course that's not the only way to catch a muskrat and there's lots of people out there that do a really good job and catch a lot of muskrat but they're not using just this method they're using lots of others so anyway hope you enjoy today's show and you'll see how we do it this is a muskrat push-up not to be confused with a colony this is uh they don't live here this is what they uh they are a certain distance from shore okay this is how far they can swim on one breath of air. And that's what he's got out here. As the ice forms, he's out here and he takes and starts shoving up these tubes of, of, of uh, weed. Now see, this is wet. He was just shoving this last night. This is still wet. But you see this, these tubes look for the world like a, a horse turd <laughs> of weed. And he pushes them up on top of the ice. What he's doing is he's building himself an area under here that's insulated and he'll always have a, a spot for air. He can come up here, he can have air, he can rest, he can uh, uh, take and uh, uh, eat if he wants to here, or whatever. These are the, 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 the places where we really like to trap these in the wintertime. I'm going to take and set a, a trap right in here. As long as he's not froze down. No, he's not. He's been coming out here. See that? He's been coming out. This is the perfect place for a foothold and I don't have any with me. They're all back at the at the uh, cabin and I'm gonna have to bring some tomorrow. But you see here, there's his hole down, down inside there. Get this to focus on it. Oh, that water's cold. And there's this little shelf here that he rests on. Another hole goes that way too. So it's a perfect spot to take and set a, a foothold there. Enough chain to go down the hole. He hits it and goes down and, and it's over quickly. But I have to cover this back in so this guy does not lose his place here. Trapping is the cornerstone that Canada was built on. Brave and sometimes crazy men and women, fueled by the lucrative fur trade, explored and mapped our great nation. Hundreds of years have passed since then, but trapping still remains vibrant, strong, and steeped in the ancient traditions. The fur bearers still follow the old paths and live as dictated by thousands of years of instinct. Fur only gets prime in the harsh temperatures of winter and trappers must respect and prepare for the weather. Trapping's past is firmly rooted in history, but today, the gear and techniques have changed. Canada is still known for the best wild fur in the world, and today our pelts are sold on the global market. Our community is large, and our numbers are growing. We are trappers. This is what we do and where we belong. Join us in our adventures. Welcome to Trapping Inc., the face of today's trapper. All right, this is a colony hut. This is typically the way I see them on my line 
They're built on shore, usually in the cattails, but lots of times they'll pick a spot like this, a, a log, and, and you can see where he has taken and built in there with moss and everything. That's uh, where he's protected for, you know, he, he, he goes in there, sleeps, and that, that sort of stuff. That's, that's the, uh, the Ponderosa for him. Big difference between this and a, and a push-up, uh, not to be confused. And I don't trap these colonies uh, out of my trap line. Uh, they're, it's really hard to, uh, to do much with them here. The push-ups are so much easier. Unfortunately, they've all been dug out. Look at them all out there though, holy. There's just so many, isn't there? Yeah. Where'd Fudd go? He's on the shore over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Looks like something came out over here. This one's dug up. Hey there. You just don't get any more perfect than this. Here's his resting area. There's the hole down back there. So I get to set my trap. I'm not sure we're going to be able to see that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. So I get to set my trap right where he's going to hit it when he comes up. And I leave him enough Black. So that he takes and uh, dives back down the hole and drowns. Back in. Insulate it good. It's not supposed to be as cold. No. Flag it. On to the next one. Buddy checking them all out around here for us? He must be. <laughs> I'll just go take a look at this one right here. This segment brought to you by Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. Online at ArgoUTV.com. Oh, there you go. You won't get any better look at it than that. Right there. Here's the hole he comes up here. Here's the ice shelf where he where he sits. And where the trap sits. You couldn't see it any more perfect than that. That top came off just perfect. This right back down. And we pack everything back in. Nice and good. I always like to kind of put my flag on the end that where my trap is. Some of these are pretty big and it doesn't always look like you know there's an obvious spot where you set your trap and Lord knows my memory can use all the help it can get. <laughs> right, Sam? Right on. Yeah, there. Come on. Let's go, Eli. Another classic set. Oh. And look at all the green, because they push everything up all the time, don't they? Yeah. 
they they come up with this stuff and they some places you see it it looks just well you, you see how how it's just uh, like a tube and they keep pushing it out through any hole that they can push out um, and that's how they just keep building and building and they keep it insulated and yeah everything Number three. Yeah. <laughs> Caught him with the belly fat. <laughs> Wasn't a leg or anything, it was his belly. Well, they are fat little rats out these in this country, I'll tell ya. Yeah. Looking. Definitely. I like how we've got, it looks like flags have bloomed everywhere out here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes, I could just leave this rope on here. You, you'd throw it to me if I fell down, wouldn't I? Absolutely I would. <laughs> this segment brought to you by Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. Online at ArgoUTV.com. This segment brought to you by Belial Traps, first in the forest. Find us online at BelialTrap.com. Dang it! Two empty ones. Two in empty in a row. Ha! That's not good. I was counting on every one of them. That's better. Man, they're nice big rats. That dark vegetation, it collects the sun, it collects the heat, and literally these will fall through the ice in a week's time, this time of the year. Yeah. That's wow. a handsome looking rat you got there. <laughs> I bet you say that to all the boys. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm liking it on the Argo. I don't. Like the oh, here we go. Perfect. If you want to come take a look at this, this is the way it's supposed to go. Am I going to want to come and take a look at that, or is there going to ice crack and be scared my... Look at the size of this dragonfly nymph. Okay, just give me a second. Dragonfly nymph. Uh, that's for the big blue one. They, they spend two years underwater. This guy looks like he's died, but 
Uh, they're a holy terror. They're, they are the killer. This is the one I talked about yesterday where we had the perfect ice dome and, yeah. and everything. And there I see a tail. And there's the rat. Perfect. Yeah. Caught on the front foot. Yeah. Yeah, you like those front foot catches. Take and cover them back in. That is a perfect one. I don't think it's going to freeze, but I just like to be sure that I'm not hurting any, anything, you know. Okay, we've got our nice dried pelted rat here, and now we're going to put it on the forming board. A lot of people mistakenly call this stretching, and we don't do that. There's a little tiny bit of stretching that's involved in it, but mostly what we're doing is we're giving the hide a form to dry to. In this case, it's a standardized form, and this is uh, these measurements are all put out by, by NAFA, and if you take and use a standardized board, then it's that much easier for them to handle and that much uh, easier for you to get a better grade. Take my, my fur, I've already given it a, a snap or two to get rid of any sawdust that's in it. I gotta take and turn it back with the, the flesh side out. And one of the things that um, that we pay attention to here is that muskrat are all finished flesh side out. Some of our, our fur, you know, we take and turn them afterwards, that kind of stuff. But in this case, with muskrat, how they go on is how they, they stay. Really simple. You can have a fleshing beam if you want for them, but muskrat are pretty simple to flesh and I usually just flesh them right on the board. You can see by the pattern here that it's a juvenile. I like to use, once again, uh, tools are, are, are everybody's preference. Some people like knives, some people like spoons. I've got a little tiny uh, uh, fleshing uh, hoop here and there's just a couple of areas. The way I skin, I end up with a little bit of fat in the chin area here. Then there's this fat here and a little fat here underneath the armpits. This segment brought to you by Belial Traps, first in the forest. Find us online at belialtrap.com. Okay, and then we have a little bit of fat down around the skirt or, or the vent area. That comes off real simple to handle. Um, like I say, I put mine just on the board and use it as as the shape to, to scrape to. It's really simple. Be careful. Once again, this is a light, very light hide. We don't want to, uh, to tear, it, uh, tear it up. There. That's about all that you have to do is get rid, of, get rid of the fat that's in that armpit without removing that membrane. Otherwise, if you take that, that heavy red membrane off of there, the muskrat hide itself is too hard to work with. It becomes too light. And then it, it makes it much, that much more difficult for, for the fur handler at the end. So they're one of the few that we leave it on and we've developed techniques for handling, handling it that way. Here's something to be pay attention to. This is a female and there's nipples here. Okay, so you don't want to scrape a hole through there. You don't have to clean right to the very edge of the skirt down here especially back where the vent is. This is the vent down here because this can all be trimmed off afterwards. You don't get paid anything for this. When they size this muskrat, it is sized from this point to this point on the back. And this, what, whatever's below that is, is valueless. Also be careful watching for any bite marks or old scars that are healed. Um, they can be re easily reopened and that will cost you in the end. Okay, that's looking pretty good. That's looking not bad at all for muskrat. 
I take and start with pegging his nose right up on the top here. One peg, I make sure that he is nice and square on the board. Biggest mistake everybody makes is this and then putting a pin in it. That's not right. What we want to do is get our sides done. So you take and pull your side down a little bit. Get a pin in. Go to the other side. Get another pin in. Now, here's the back. Here's the line that the computer's going to draw. Right across here. So there's no sense putting a whole bunch of strain on that tail and stretching everything out. This is where the line's going to be drawn that's going to give you your sizing. Take and do this over here on this side. Some folks like to take and uh, push a stick through just to turn the, the legs under here. See how nice and neat that looks? Okay. One thing you do to use is a belly board. I don't use a very big belly board. Um, lots of people use cattail reed, that sort of thing. Put it up to dry and away you go. It's that simple. So for these particular setups, you want to be sure that even if you don't set a trap on these, that you cover them up real good and make sure the hole doesn't freeze because these little guys are counting on this as their air hole to, to get them out from shore and, and get the food. Anyway, as you could have seen from, from the show, lots of different ways to catch muskrat. We have a lot of fun doing it and they're actually pretty good money. So I hope you've enjoyed today's show and we'll see you down the trail. Trapping Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. Online at ArgoUTV.com. Belial Traps. First in the forest. Find us online at BelialTrap.com. And by Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine. Alberta's only hunting, fishing, and trapping magazine. You can keep up with all the action online at TrappingInc.com or join our Facebook and YouTube sites.